you're welcome here. Make yourself at home. Good morning, everybody. Well, it's a good morning for me because it's 7 a.m. in Auckland. Um, but for most of you, it's good evening or good afternoon. And welcome to this webinar on how you can move to New Zealand. It's a massive life change, but after COVID, the opportunity to move here and be part of our um, population of 5 million people is the best that it's been in, in many, many years. So we've got a, a very packed schedule this morning, 40 minutes of intensive information on how you can make the first move. So I've got some amazing panellists who have been in the industry for years and years and years. In fact, the, the, the team here are probably the most experienced in the industry. Um, and I'm going to go all the way up to the UK. Paul Goddard, if you could introduce yourself, Paul. Hi, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name's Paul, and I moved to New Zealand with my family back in 2003. Um, we started off in a place called Taronga in the Bay of Plenty. Um, I didn't know much about New Zealand, but they had a Bay of Poverty and a Bay of Plenty, so I chose the Bay of Plenty. <laughs> that was really that naive. Um, and for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, um, been helping people just like you make the move. So it's great to see you on here. Thank you, Paul. And in Auckland, in the Auckland office with me, nice and early, uh, Nazine Lalazari, our Head of Immigration Services. Nazine. Hi everyone, um, my name is Nassim. Um, you might have seen me on these webinars before. I've been with Working In for 11 years. Um, I didn't quite decide where to live in New Zealand the way that Paul did. Um, my husband's a Kiwi, so we moved over 13 years ago um, and have lived in Auckland the whole time. So um, beautiful country. Um, looking forward to talking to everyone about it today. Fantastic. Uh, so look, just to, just to tell you what we'll be going through today. Oh, by the way, my name is Scott Matheson. Uh, I'm the founder of Working In. We founded this business 20 years ago um, specifically to help employers in New Zealand find skilled people from around the world. So we've come from very much an employment background. We're not recruiters, by the way. We're, we're immigration consultants, but we help link employers with people from all around the world. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail. We love what we do. We love helping people come down to New Zealand. And, um, you know, we're still doing it and here we are. And uh, we hope you get a lot out of, this, out of this webinar today. So let's just run through what we're going to be talking about. Really, it's a quick overview on where things are at with borders and immigration. Um, you know, where do you start? What's the starting point? Because a lot of people spend a lot of time talking to people, uh, researching on the internet, um, you know, and, but what is the start point? So that's really important. Uh, you want to get that right. Um, can you make the move? We're going to tell you a little bit about how you can make the move and can you make the move? You don't want to waste time and money um, if you can't move. So let's just understand that first. How do you make the move? Because that's also really challenging, but you can save thousands of dollars and lots of time if you do this efficiently and properly. And someone like Paul Goddard has helped people do this, my word, I mean, into the thousands of times. So, um, you know, he can, he can advise you with his eyes shut on that one. And, um, you know, we might be able to have, answer some questions. So, look, there is a chat. Please answer the questions. We do have in the background a licensed immigration advisor um, answering questions um, as you go. So feel free to drop in a question and we'll do our best to answer. If we can't answer right now, we will answer in the future. And I think that, that's that. So, look, let's just get straight into it. Um, we had a little bit of a photo competition here at Working In, and um, it was who, who has the best daily commute photos? And uh, Petra, who's um, on the chat tonight, uh, her husband sent in these photos. So it's a bit of a laugh. But, look, um, I'm not sure if this is how he commutes to work every day, but that's, that's my city where I live, Auckland. Uh, they live on the North Shore, um, and he uh, chose to paddleboard into the city. And I'm not sure how often he does that, but um, look, it's uh, it, 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 I guess it um, summarises very much what we talk about down here, which is work lifestyle balance. Um, and you know, the balance is so, so important. And coming out of COVID, I think a lot of people are searching for that for that balance. So I'm not going to do too much talking but I will talk a little bit about what's happening in New Zealand now, and then I'll be handing, um, handing you over to our experts who, are know, who, know, who you know the subject in detail. But first, what, what, what's actually happening in New Zealand? It's been fascinating, 
um, in that when the borders shut, and you probably know that New Zealand was very strict around border um, shutting, that uh, it, it stopped people coming into the country. And as a consequence, um, you know, the, the unemployment rate went down, i.e. a skills shortage started to emerge. Because New Zealand's always been reliant on skilled migrants. And not having skilled migrants come into the country for the last two years has created this scenario where almost every employer is looking for, for people. It's, it's actually really, really challenging. In fact, um, 83, a report came out yesterday that 83% of regions in New Zealand um, are experiencing skill shortages to the point where they can't find a New Zealander to do the job that they need to, to do. So what does that mean? It means that um, immigration to New Zealand is linked very, very closely to the job. Nazim will talk to you about that. Um, and so therefore, finding a job right now is relatively easy. It's not easy, but it's relatively easy. In fact, if you've got the skills, but the, the, there's a big disconnect between the employer and, and the offshore person. So we'll tell you how to bridge that. But what we will say is that the, that the, um, that the scenario or the setting or the macro setting for finding a job is as good as it ever is. Um, so look, the, we... <clears throat> So there's low unemployment, as I said. There is, there is, however, a lot of competition. On the webinar today, uh, we have over 500 people watching, um, and we're running these webinars all the time. So the demand for New Zealand is very, very strong, and the, you, know, you will be in a competitive space when you are looking for jobs, and we'll tell you how you can overcome that. Um, we're going to go through how to avoid making costly mistakes. Now, this is Paul's area because he's seen so many people go down the wrong path and then come back to him. We know the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, and he's going to stop you from being that, um, you know, being that person that goes down the wrong path. So, Paul, um, will give you a lot of insights on that, and um, and then really, it's about um, maximizing your opportunities. You know, how do you maximize the opportunity and reduce your risks? We will go into immigration policy. Um, Nazim will be talking to you about that in a moment, but really, this is this is less about understanding all the policy because that's what we do and more about trying to uh, maximize your opportunities reduce the risks and keep the momentum going so paul um i'm going to start with you because you're somebody who has just helped so many people over the years with their journey to new zealand and without diving straight into sort of immigration policy you know how do you approach the move to new zealand what's your you know advice if you're starting out from the get-go I guess the the, the, the key, thing, key thing backtracking there, Scott, was you, you mentioned about avoiding costly mistakes. I was one of those people who made costly mistakes. So I very much approached this from learning from those mistakes. You know, I think a lot of what we do at working in as a team, because a lot of us have moved to New Zealand from other countries, is based on our own experiences and not only our own knowledge, but what we've actually experienced. And to uh, approach the move, the, the, the biggest problem that most people have right at the start is they just don't know where to start. They realize very quickly that they need a job offer to get a visa. They also realize very quickly that most of the jobs advertise a visa to apply for this job. So there's this immediate brick wall. And yes. then they go, hang on, I can't lodge anything. I can't apply for anything. How the hell does anyone move to New Zealand? And it, they just don't know where to start. And this is where most people make a massive mistake because they do the one thing that they think they can do. The only thing they think they can do is apply for jobs that they see advertised online. And that's a mistake because most employers are just going to hit the delete button for various reasons that we'll go into. So the way that you have to approach this move is you've got to break it down into steps. It's only by breaking it down into steps and stages that you can minimize the risks, maximize the opportunities. Paul, it's interesting that you say that already I'm looking at a post from somebody um, and I'll read it out. I've been seeking employment in New Zealand and getting positive results only to be declined when an employer knows I don't have a valid visa immigration requires a job offer to process a visa. So, you know, I think that um, post summarises the situation that you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. on, on this webinar, we will be very much encouraging you not to apply for jobs at this point in time. It's all about getting ready and preparing and making sure that you are, um, you know, employment ready before you even go there. So I think 
Uh, Nazim, from your perspective, can you just briefly explain to everybody how the work visa and the, and the employment is so closely linked? That's number one. And then the second part, how do people get residency later on? Yeah, so um, that's correct. For most visas in New Zealand, you need the job offer in order to apply for the visa. Um, to be eligible for the visa, you need the job offer. The exclusion being the working holiday, which I see that Petra's responded to in the chat already. So what we find, um, and Paul talked about removing those barriers, is that with the right approach, um, you can get that job offer and the employer will understand that you need that in order to apply for the visa. Um, at the moment, we're kind of in between immigration policies. So we're moving from something called essential skills over to the accredited employer work visa scheme that will take place on the third of, so from the 4th of July. Um, but effectively the, the requirements are the same. You need to be able to do the work um, that you've been offered the job on. And then the employer basically says, yes, we like Johnny. He says he's a, I don't know, carpenter. He's got his you know, minimum three years experience. So then we apply for that visa. And once it's approved, you're able to um, start living and working in New Zealand, doing that job for that employer. So there's a temporary visa process, but then there's also the residence. And they have slightly different requirements. Obviously, residence is forever. Um, and so there is um, more that you need to meet in terms of eligibility and sort of substantiating your skills and your value to New Zealand moving forward. So, so um, I'm going to come back to that work visa, and so it's it's a, it's a it's a massive point here. But uh, on July the fourth, and I don't really want to make this complex, but well, it's it, it needs to be um, outlined that on July the fourth, we we here in New Zealand are going through the largest change in immigration policy than that's been seen for over thirty years. Um, and so, for anyone who's on this webinar, by the time you go through the process, you won't be. Um, you know, applying until after July the 4th, most likely. Uh, uh, some people, if you're going to be earning $85,000 or more, might be able to apply um, prior to that. And, and Nazim, do you want to um, just clarify that, please? Because there are border exemptions right now if those people can get a job, and we need to talk to you quite quickly. Yeah. Firstly, apologies if it looks like I've got candy in my mouth. I've got a mint and it's so I don't cough and I can actually respond. Um, so <laughs> Paul's laughing. Um, so, at, so the New Zealand borders have been closed since the beginning of COVID and that's still the case as the government slowly then allows different classes of people to enter with different conditions. One of those groups of people that's able to enter is those that can qualify for a critical purpose visitor visa, um, which is effectively a work visa um, for those that have got skills in New Zealand that the government said, look, we're going to make an exception. You're important. We need you here and we're going to allow you to come now. Part of those requirements is one of those requirements um, that's available is that you have a base salary of just under 85K New Zealand dollars per annum. Um, and if you do have a job offer that meets that requirement, we can apply for a border exemption and have you on shore ASAP. Yeah, so it's important to know that if you feel as though you um, meet that criteria that you uh, would be earning over $85,000, there could be an opportunity to come in prior to July the 4th. But for most, July the 4th onwards is where you need to be uh, employed by an accredited employer. So there's a bit of complexity. I guess that's what we're trying to say here. And um, even, even a lot of employers don't understand, understand it, which is why you might be having problems if you're if you're um, submitting a CV. So just to summarize what you're saying, Nazim, um, in order to get a work visa, you need a job offer. Um, we strongly recommend that you don't uh, apply for jobs until you're ready because employers wanna know that you're ready and you're eligible. Uh, it's part of what we will do. Uh, in fact, probably the first thing that we'll be asking you to do is fill out a free appraisal form. And it just uh, is a, a very simple form and it allows us to go, oh, it looks as though you would be eligible or we don't think you are. So you know at no cost whether you've actually potentially got a pathway to New Zealand. And that's what we call the, the stake in the ground. Paul, you know, what do you have to say about that? Because um, for us, this is the, this is the first step and it's, it's such a defining moment, isn't it? It's such an important step because you've got to do something to make this move happen. 
and and there's so many questions that people need answers to and because we've been doing this for so long I don't think there's any questions that we haven't seen yet (laughs) because everyone has the same questions you know how do I get a job how does this work how does that work we've seen these questions before we know the answer to these questions but every case is different and I just want to let everyone into a, a big secret everyone's going how do I get this job how do I get the job the secret to getting a job offer if there is a secret let's get things straight first there is no magic wand OK, no one can wave a magic wand. Only an employer can guarantee you a job offer. Anyone who's telling you they can guarantee you a job and they're not the employer offering you the job isn't telling the truth. There is no magic wand, but there are things that you can do to put you in place. And one of the key things that most people miss is you have to be able to prove to an employer that you're fully eligible for the visas, that you're fully prepared and document ready and ready to move before the employer can engage with you. Your CV does not tell the employer if, when and how you're going to get to New Zealand. If the employer doesn't know if, when and how you're going to get to New Zealand, the employer isn't going to talk to you. And that's the reality. And that's why most people who just randomly blast CVs to employers in New Zealand get no response and so it's one of the areas where we put a lot of focus uh, into you know um getting the job offer is the key to this whole move we can only help you get a job offer if we've got you fully prepared document ready ready to move uh, and everything's in place because we have to remove the risks for you as the clients but we also have to remove the risks for the employers most employers don't know how visas work Even with this new accreditation that's coming in, you know, and Nazim will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure part of that process doesn't require the employment, the employer to understand how visas work. It's the government looking at the employer and checking that they're a good employer, that they've got good HR practices, that they're paying the right salaries. You know, it's there to protect you as a migrant, that it's an employer who's been checked before they offer you a job. And I think one of the other big game changers that is coming in is This will be the first time in history that we've got a situation where we're going to know potentially which employers are willing to hire people from offshore. Previously, there was no real accreditation. You didn't know if an employer was interested or not in hiring people offshore. You'd have to ask them. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Going forward, there is going to be a pool of employers who are very clearly not only interested, they've taken steps so that they can hire people from offshore. This is a game changer. But what those employers are also telling us, and you'll back me up on this, Scott, is because they're going through all this hassle to get accredited and paying money to the government, they are not going to risk offering jobs to people who are doing their own visas. Because why would they go to all this effort from their part as the employer to then take a huge risk on somebody if they don't know if, when and how they're going to get to New Zealand? So proving to an employer if, when and how you're going to get to New Zealand is one of the key things that you need to be able to do to get a job offer. And here's another uh, insight into that. If you're doing this on your own, you can't prove to an employer if, when and how you're going to get to New Zealand. You could tell an employer you're fully prepared and ready to move. That just means you're keen. It doesn't answer their questions and it isn't proof. If it comes from us, it is proof because we've checked you out we've assessed you, we've got your document ready, we've got your move ready, we're assisting with your visas. That gives employers peace of mind. And just to jump in on that, um, I was speaking to an employer of one of our clients, was it this week, last week? Can't remember, it was sometime soon. And basically I was answering those questions. How, when, and when are they gonna get here? What else was required from them to help join the dots? We understand the situation of our client, We understand what the employer is offering. We understand the immigration policy. So we're able to explain it all and make sure that we're having everyone meet at a point that works. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. There is a lot of unknowns at the moment and the employers are are, are not necessarily over the policy. So, um, you know, what we're saying here is our recommendation to you is to find out if you're eligible. Um, Here's a little screen that'll take you through that. Um, so we've set up that free appraisal form. Someone's posted it up online now. Uh, look, a couple of people have said they've applied and we haven't got back to us So, and we haven't got back to them. So we apologise for that. We'll look into that today. I mean, we are receiving very, very high volume, but um, so I'm not sure. But check your junk as well, because junk does seem to be an issue that 
um, everybody's experiencing with um, email these days. Um, one of uh, Nazim's team will then look at that eligibility form. And then the next phase after that is a, um, a full consultation. So you get a consultation for 10 minutes or so with uh, Paul or one of our team. And um, following, following that, you have the choice to go for the, for the full deep, uh, what we call the, is the my visa path. So that's, there's the free appraisal, costs you nothing, gives you some idea. And then if you want to go to the next step, there's this uh, my visa path. Do you want to take um, the listeners through the, what the my visa path is, Nazim? Sure. So the My Visa Path is effectively looking at your details in full. So um, we had a few comments about, oh, I've done the appraisal, you know, I haven't heard back or I was told that maybe it wasn't for me. We still respond to every single person. So please do check your spam and your junk folders for what we might have said would be the best next step for you. Um, and then where we do recommend that you do the My Visa Path, the reason is, is we're trying to get a better understanding of you, your circumstances, your family, um, and your work history so that we can determine what your future pathway to New Zealand looks like. Is it that you have to obtain some kind of registration because of your occupation? So you should be doing that before you apply for a job because if you don't, you're going to... I mean, New Zealand is big, but it's still small. You don't want to be annoying every you know, potential employer with the, I'm really excited, but I'm not going to come for three years. That's, that's not the point. <laughs> you need to, you need to actually be ready to move when you start talking to employers. And so what the visa, my visa path does is look through your circumstances and map out what that journey looks like from an immigration perspective and what you need to do to be able to be job ready and then subsequently visa ready. So it does ask for quite a bit of information um, and it's not just for you, it's for your partner, your children, um, even your children that might not be um, migrating with you but are still dependents. We still need to know what's going on with them and, and to make any considerations, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as, to, as to what might need to be done to make sure that your, your migration and your journey is as smooth as possible. Thanks, Nazim. Someone's quickly asked uh, about an investor visa, and yes, there, there is an investment visa class at the moment. It's on hold, um, so no, nothing's being processed, and we understand that there may be changes on that investor <laughs> visa, um, and, um, but we're not sure. There's no detail yet. So we're here to talk today about the most common route, which is the employment route, um, and and uh, yeah, and at the moment the investor class is is, is on hold. So um, thanks, thanks, Nazim. Now, Paul, <coughs> um, we've got to put you on mute while you're doing your uh, post-COVID coughing, Nazim. Um, <laughs> um, once people have done this full my visa path assessment, I think one of the most critical things from my perspective of that is, is having an hour or so to talk to you. What, what, what happens then? Yeah, so as Nazim said, um, getting all that detail stuff done is important. You know, having the visa team look at your details, work out the, the kind of best routes for you, send you that in a report is really important. But what is absolute, and that gives you clarity. You know, that clarifies that you meet the criteria you are eligible for visas and you can do this theoretically. What the call with me does is basically for 45 minutes or an hour, it's me listening to you and what you're trying to do, understanding where you're at and what you're trying to do, using the report as a blueprint to outline your roadmap to New Zealand. So the call with me isn't, can you make the move? Because the reports already confirm that. The call with me is, how do you make the move? What are the steps you need to take? What are the hurdles you're facing? How do you overcome those hurdles? We talk about visas. We talk about timeframes. We talk about how to get a job. We talk about costs. Um, we even talk about what it's like to live in New Zealand and if you've got kids or whatever. The idea is that at the end of that session with me, you will have all the answers to all of your questions. And more importantly, you'll have a clear way forward because it's only when you've got all the answers and you've got a clear way forward that you're then in a position to make these life-changing decisions. 
And that's why it's really important. Every call is different, but with New Zealand, we follow the same process on how we assist you. Whether you're a nurse, whether you're an engineer, whether you're in IT, the process is the same, the steps are the same. And, and that call is so essential. If you're looking for the one thing that you really need to do, if you're serious about moving to New Zealand, it's getting that call. The amount of people that I've, I've, I don't know, how many of those calls do I do each month, Scott? So I don't know, 60, 70, I don't know, whatever they are. It's yeah. insane at the moment. But we've done, I have personally have done thousands of those 45 minute, one hour consultations. And um, not one person has ever turned around and said, that was a waste of time. I wish I hadn't done it. And in fact, most people have said, if we had not have had that call, we would not be in New Zealand right now. Because without the call, you've got no clarity, you've got no answers, and you've got no way forward. <laughs> the, the call literally puts you in the position to start making this work. You've got to do something to make it happen. That's why it's important. Your alternative is spinning round and round in circles on the internet for hundreds of hours, and you're not going forwards, you're not going sideways, you're going round and round in circles. Thanks, Paul. And I, I do agree. And that's kind of what we're trying to say is, is start now, isn't it? It's like start and, and let the momentum go. Because there's a lot of these questions. Someone said, how long does it take to get from step one to getting a work, work visa? Well, um, how long is a piece of string, really? Because um, you know, until you get your job offer, then you're not going to be able to apply for your work visa. But you shouldn't be really applying for a job until you're ready. So, the, the, so I think... Um, the way that I view what you do is you, you clarify the steps and break it all down into manageable bite-sized steps. Um, it's a, it is a linear process, isn't it? But mm -hmm. too many people try and start at the end point and then yeah. have to come back. And I, and, oh. I, and I just feel as though, because this is a once in a lifetime uh, move, that it's understandable that people don't know the way to go about it. Um, and for me, what you do is provide the bite-sized chunks the step by step by steps and take the stress away and, yeah. and, and this can be really stressful so um paul one of the things that uh you know people want to know about is the job 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 obviously that's so important look we are not recruiters that's not what we do but what we do do is help you guide you on where you could be looking we've got a um as soon as you engage with us, we've got an employment portal. We'll give you a login. Um, that just this um, that, that that button on the left, you open that, and there's loads and loads and loads of videos on how to prepare a CV, how to do an over um, a, an interview, how to uh, basically put your your you in the in the best possible way that you can compete with a New Zealander, even though you might be living on the other side of the world. Um, and look, there's also, once you do get your job, a whole lot of information on how to, um, how to pro provide us with all the information around your visa and all the documents, because a lot of that stuff needs to be um, accessed now. And Nazim, I'll get you to talk about that in a second. And then uh, in addition, there's the, all the support. So um, when you are moving, you really, really need to have partners who you can trust shipping companies, um, insurance companies, pension transfer companies, pet transfer companies, um, uh, moving your money, safe banks. So we've developed partnerships with people that we've known for over 20 years and, and basically we refer them straight to you and you can be sort of uh, assured that you're dealing with the best people in the market. But I do want to go back to this, um, this information around the visa Nazim and the information that needs to be collected. What are the fish hooks that trip people up? What is the stuff that takes long? Like if you're a nurse or, um, for example, registration or your qualifications, maybe you can just give a summary or some examples of, of what people need to be looking at right now. Yeah, so I think if you're in an occupation that does need registration or licensing to work in New Zealand, you do need that registration or licensing to be able to have the visa issued. Um, and so because of that, because otherwise you can't legally do your job. Um, so if you do work in a licensed or registered trade, um, looking at and starting that registration process, do you need to find your original documents because they don't accept scanned copies? 
Um, do you need to be looking for, I don't know, some work experience documents to prove that you had that registration from a certain period of time? That's the kind of stuff that can take some time and people always leave to the last minute and then they get into a panic because, oh, I need to, have, I've got this conditional offer of employment subject to me getting my visa, but for me to get my visa, I need this registration and that's going to take me six months. And so all of a sudden you're in a flat and you can't make things work faster because you haven't prepared. <laughs> so anything related to registration, your qualifications um, or your work experience documents. The other thing that's really, really important, and I don't know why this always seems to come up, is that people seem to destroy their birth certificates. <laughs> um, the number of people from the UK who tell me that they've shredded them for security reasons, and um, you do need a copy of your full birth certificate. It needs to list your mother and your father's name and you. So, you know, identity documents are important as well. Obviously, we all know about a passport. Please make sure you have a valid passport. You can't apply for a visa unless you've got a valid passport. So they seem like obvious things, but until you start the process and you start to look at what you need to do, sometimes these, these um, requirements can be overlooked. Um, the other thing that's quite common is if you've got um, children from a previous relationship and what that situation is going to look like as part of your migration. Are they coming? Are they not? You know, do we have the right court documents? Do we have the right bits of paper signed to make sure that you can migrate? <laughs> um, and then also if you've got a health or a character consideration. So always tell everyone just because you have a health or character issue, it doesn't mean you don't qualify to migrate. It just means we need to do a little bit more work, potentially a little bit more homework um, and preparation to make sure that that process is not held up down the line. So there's actually quite a lot that needs to be done even before you get to the job. Because um, if you don't understand and you're not prepared for all of these things, you're going to have no idea as to your timelines and you're not going to be able to reasonably tell an employer when you will or won't be able to arrive. So, you know, as, as Paul said, you know, there's all these little steps. Um, these are all little steps as part of that journey of actually arriving in, in New Zealand. Yeah. And then, Nazim, um, if you quit, there's been a few questions around how long does it take once you have a job offer to apply for the visa? I mean, once it's lodged, let's say once you actually got all your information and we're able to lodge the visa, um, I, I, <laughs> there is an unknown there as well because of July 4, the huge volume that's coming through the new system. What's your view on how long it might take to obtain a visa in the new world, in the new, in the new system? So temporary visas are always processed faster than residents. That's the point. You're helping to quickly fill a need, you know, so if the employer said, I need this person in this job now, then the government's obviously trying to push to have you here quickly as well. Then normally within a couple of months. So I think, mm. um, I think I saw that maybe Petra sort of suggested the same thing, between one and three months, which is about right. Even yeah. now with the border exemptions, anything that we're doing for those, again, within the same time frame. Residency okay. takes longer though. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, that, that's why we say that when you are applying for a job, you need to be ready to move mm. uh, because once that visa is approved, you also then need to arrive within a certain period of time as well. Or that visa, because you haven't activated it, you haven't arrived to start, um, it can be cancelled. Uh, so realistically, if people are starting now, there is no reason why they wouldn't might be able to arrive here by, um, you know, this, this year. Correct, if not sooner. Correct, yeah. I'm just going to throw up some photos um, for, for a bit of fun. Um, we asked everybody here at Working In to send us photos of uh, their time in New Zealand. That top left-hand um, photo, actually, with that big bay and those campsites is actually where that's my photo. That's where we go uh, camping every year. Um, you know, we, part, we really do like the outdoor lifestyle um, and the family-friendly side of New Zealand. And, you know, everybody here that uh, works at Working In, we have about uh, 40, 45 staff. So we're large enough to, to process visas and small enough to be really personal. And, um, you know, I, I was really interesting asking people to send in all their photos because it was so much around the outdoors, but also so much around children, family, and, um, you know, and for us, that whole balance of lifestyle is, is really what it's all about. Um, it's about being able to get to the outdoors, 
this uh, beach in that top left-hand corner, that's my local beach. It's 10 minutes from my house and that's Auckland City. So, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not bad that we can, um, you know, access nature so easily. Um, and I think that's one of the whole reasons why people want to move to New Zealand. And Paul, I know that you often talk about being over there in the UK and the, and the British weather and how you miss that, uh, you know, the sunshine of New Zealand. And because we, we um, you know, we do enjoy it and, and, and we do get fixated sometimes on the job and the money and what it means and how much disposable income you have and all this sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's lifestyle that we're kind of looking for and that really critical balance between working and living. And mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, and, and especially, you know, for, for kids and having the experience of being able to play in the water like this, jump off rocks, do flips, whatever it might be. Those are the sort of things that, you know, make kids Kiwi kids. And, um, you know, we don't really, we're not really here to sell New Zealand. I don't think we necessarily need to. Um, but I really like showing, seeing those photos because it does encapsulate um, what we do um, or how we live. Look, this is our team here. As I said before, we do have a reasonably large team. In fact, we're probably, we're definitely in the top two immigration consultancies in New Zealand by size. Um, throughout this whole business, we have multiple different languages so um, obviously English but um, uh, Tagalog from the Philippines, Deutsch, French, Spanish, Nazim is Iranian by birth so um, Hungarian my word um, yeah we, 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 we uh, have a lot of languages so, so, so we can't we can help um, so really the next step is 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 what Paul the next step is to fill out one of our forms, fill out the free initial appraisal form. If you haven't already, there is no risk to that. There is no cost attached to that. We'll have a look if we can help you. Like Nazim says, we'll respond anyway. But if we can help you, you'll then get a, another free 10 minute call with one of our consultants. They'll get some more details and some give you some more clarity. We call that a bit of a clarity session. Um, and then going on from there, you can actually get that full um, assessment from the visa team, which includes a full consultation with me. And, you know, that's how you get access to me. That's how you're going to get the real answers. That's your big step forward. That's the main step forward. If you want to do the little baby steps first, the free bits, do that. <laughs> that's fine. But work towards getting that full consultation because that's where the real value comes in. You can talk about New Zealand for as long as you want and as many times as you want. You can look at pictures of New Zealand for as many times as you want. But unless you do something to make this happen, that's all you're going to be doing. Um, and you're right, Scott. I mean, if you can sum up, you can sum up the work-life balance or lifestyle in New Zealand in two words. It's easier. It's easier because there's nice weather. It's easier because there's less people. It's easier because it's a beautiful country. It's the least corrupt country in the world. It's the happiest country in the world. It's got one of the best education systems in the world. It tops the lists for all of these things. Best rugby team in the world, obviously. <laughs> you know, it know. just it just does. And, you know, I, I miss it so much at the moment. Look, I'm in the UK at the moment temporarily because I need to be for just for family reasons. But basically, I can't even look at pictures of New Zealand because <laughs> it just I just miss it so much, you know. And it's it's the little things that really matter. And Making a move to New Zealand is absolutely life-changing, but don't be scared of it. Don't be worried about it. Get support and advice from people who can help you do it. Then you don't have to be scared about it. It is stressful. It is difficult. If it wasn't difficult, uh, everyone would be doing it, you know? And, you know, anything worthwhile in life has risk and cost attached to it. So embrace that. Accept it. And then get help and support to minimise the risks, maximise the opportunities. Yeah, the cost uh, is, is is very relative and it's nominal when it, it comes down to the bigger picture, doesn't it, Paul? Thank you very much, the Paul. The price of a decent car, you get a whole new life. <laughs> There's a man who's done it. And Nazim, yeah. <laughs> um, if you could just uh, give your final words, please, because I'm very aware that uh, we're keeping people from their evenings um, over in Europe and the UK. Just, I think I'm just going to reiterate what Paul just said. Um, mm -hmm. That if you know, if you do want to be moving, 
if you do want New Zealand to, to be where you live and work, then you need to take that first step. And that first step is for us to, to look at your details via that appraisal so we can see how we might be able to help you. Okay, fantastic. So look, um, uh, um, we've basically said, look, as we close this webinar, feel free to stay in here and chat and we'll see if we can answer more questions. Uh, but Sorry. if you don't... Scott, can I just cut in just for one second? Oh, there was just can. one little bit that I wanted to get in before we go. Um, you know, when people are saying, what do you want to do next? If you're in the UK currently, um, I am going to be doing, or we're going to be doing, Nazim's even flying over from New Zealand, I believe, for this, which is, you know, pretty mad. <laughs> so we're going to be doing a couple of live events, one in London, one in Manchester. They're happening very soon in May. Tickets are extremely limited. We're keeping these events small so that we can talk to people individually at these events, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to post the link. Get you If you're in the UK, get your tickets, get in, and it would be great to see you. I just wanted to get that in because completely forgot about that. And, um, yeah. Have you got a link to that, Paul, that you can put up? Yeah, I'm just going to I'm just gonna post it now. Okay, fantastic. And for the person that said, how's the wildlife in New Zealand? No snakes, no crocodiles, nothing that'll bite you, nothing that'll eat you. It's safe as anything. Kiwis don't, yeah, attack you. Run away from you. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, hey, look, I think that's it from us. We'd like to talk more. I hope that's been helpful. Um, uh, as we've been saying, do this eligibility assessment for those people who've already done the free appraisal form. So I'll just get this language free. Free appraisal form. And then after that, if we think that you've got a pathway, then it's the full eligibility assessment. So it's one, then two. Um, so for those that have already... Um, completed a free appraisal form, please look in your junk uh, or your spam to see if we've responded because we should be responding to everybody. Um, and, and for everybody else, that's your first step. Let's get going. We want to see you down here. Um, and so thanks for, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And kia ora. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.